Hi everyone, thanks for checking out another video by Asia Digital Mojo. Hope you enjoy! Thank you so much for joining this webinar. It, today we'll be looking at the new rules of marketing and PR. And this is actually going to quickly look through a particular book that discusses this. So what is that book? It's the new rules of marketing and PR, how to use social media online, video, mobile applications, blogs, news releases, and viral marketing to reach buyers directly. So this is by David Meerman Scott, and it really takes a look at how new media is affecting how we market and do PR today. So what are these new rules? Marketing then doesn't necessarily work for marketing now. So what does that mean? Well, it means that uh, before the advent of computers, companies often relied on TV ads, radio ads, and newspapers to send out a message. So they would have little print ads, they would have little banners, they would have 30-second TV advertisements. And in many respects, companies still use these forms of media. It's uh, still very much so popular in many places in the world, but now that we're in the digital age, we have more tools at our disposal, which include the web, social media, smart technology, and what we want to remember is that everything is connected. My phone can be connected to my tablet, which can be connected to my laptop, which can be connected to my smartwatch, for example. So everything is connected, and we have to be really, really cautious of that and really remember that because it can be utilized to make marketing more meaningful. So marketing really is much more now than it used to be, which was just about advertising, selling products, being one way only, meaning that... Um, you would send out an ad and you just hoped that your customers did something about it. They didn't have to interact or do anything in respect to this ad. And it didn't work in conjunction with PR. So um, PR itself used to be just about the media only with lots of very specialized language that only journalists would um, understand. And it would just be about getting as much news as possible and then releasing that information. But now marketing and PR are so much more about connecting with your audience and not just being a source of uh, information. So how do we challenge these rules? Well, we challenge them by being different. So you need to have a lot of news coming out and you have to think about uh, options such as optimization for your websites, for your apps, for your services. What can you do to make your site, your app, the first that is seen. And remember that you are what you say. So if you talk a lot about technology, people will associate you as a technology-based company, etc. But what you also want to do is you want to open up communications and make it more about participation. So you, so you want to make it more about engaging with your audience. What does your audience want to say? And now that social media has especially become very popular in the last several years, you want to embrace these different platforms that people use to share their opinions. And they have a lot of opinions. People want to be heard. They'll use Twitter, Facebook, etc. to tell you exactly what they think. Visual communication has become much more dynamic and engaging and interesting now than it used to be. And it's also within easier reach. So you have videos all over YouTube, Yoku. You have ebooks now, which means that your iPad could have 50 odd books in a single place. And that means that people can read whatever they're looking for in, a, in one area without having to go to a library, without having um, books take up a lot of space, etc. And uh, marketing now and PR are not so much about awards as they are about winning clients. So you want to market right through direct communications, but you need to know how to do it. There are just so many tools out there, so what are you going to use for you? Some companies are very Facebook savvy, but they'll ignore, say, Pinterest, for example. Other companies may do the opposite. It really depends on what's right for that particular company. But you want to show off what is really good about you. So what makes you special? What makes you different? Um, are you very design savvy? Then use the right uh, tools, such as Pinterest, to show off what you can do. And you want to create the right type of information. Um, if you are design savvy, maybe you want to post up news related to different artists, the, new, uh, the newest design trends, etc. And you want to know who your audience is beyond the statistics. It's not enough to just say our audience 
members are usually between the ages of 35 and 40. What what do they want to do? It's not enough to say that your audience is be, uh, between the ages of 35 to 40. What else about them should you know? What about their habits? Do they like technology just as much as they like design? Do they like television ads just as much? You also want to have a lot of news about yourself so that people get to know you better. You want to share what you know because people want more information. They want to learn more about you and about what you know. So social media has especially become uh, popular in the last several years and there are so many different platforms that you can use. And what a lot of companies do nowadays is they use them in conjunction with other platforms. So your Facebook account can be linked to your Twitter account. Pinterest can share to Facebook, etc. Job searching has even taken on a new form thanks to social media, meaning it's no longer about just searching and scanning newspaper ads for jobs. People often connect with companies through LinkedIn, for example. And using social media, you can create an audience and foster it through various means, such as forums, wikis, and through community management. And this is great because then you'll have a dedicated audience. So blogs, videos, and audio have really taken off uh, in the last few decades. And uh, these are really, really interesting tools for any company. Blogs are a really great way of uh, updating what your company has been up to. And you'll find a lot of game companies, for example, use blogs to update eager fans about development. For example, maybe a new character has been added in or a new trailer has come out. So blogs are also a really great way to check out what people are saying about you and to connect with people who are interested in your company. Uh, people will use their blogs to talk about you and you can follow them and see what they say. And blogs are also a great way to sort of manage what, um, what your company's reputation is like. You can use it for, well, damage control as some companies do, or you can use it to enhance your company's image. It's really interesting when employees handle blogs because then they give a sort of inside insiders look to what it's like to work in a company. Many people, many game fans, for example, are very interested about what it's like to work for major game studios. So hearing what the employees have to say can really draw a lot of attention. Now videos and audio are really great storytelling tools. They can be very thought-provoking. So with videos, you don't always need speech or audio to make it uh, memorable. Sometimes simple images tell enough of a story. And similarly with audio, you don't need images all the time to um, get your audience thinking. It can purely be music. It can purely be a few simple words. So what does this mean? It means that there are more ways than one to share your information. It's not just about forcing your users to read uh, newspaper ads. It's about connecting with them via different tools. So what about being viral? Well, going viral on the internet requires something a little different. A lot of viral videos and content goes viral because they're just different. They're humorous. They create a connection with the user that hasn't been uh, quite done before in that particular case. For example, if you look at Grumpy Cat, hugely popular simply because the cat just doesn't look very happy. It's really uh, best to keep an eye on what's going on in terms of viral content because you can actually study them and see what exactly about it, about this content is making it viral and see if you can somehow apply that to your own work. But just remember that when you do viral videos, it's not going to be easy. You have to really be prepared to be something very different, zany, weird, fresh. It's going to be... It's going to be different. A really good tool you can use is Creative Commons related materials. So Creative Commons means materials that have been approved for use for any purpose. So it can be for um, paid work, unpaid work. It's basically copyright free. But um, if you use it, you can actually credit the person who made these materials and they can also share what you have created uh, to help promote what um, you've developed. That actually can work really well for you because it can also mean uh, extra earning potential. So make it all about content and posting fast. 
So you want to make sure that you have really great content and that you're posting fast. Uh, good content can really build up your community. And presentation is key to this. You want to have your uh, information laid out in a very easy to read manner and that, that's also user friendly. But you also want to be quick and sometimes even do uh, posting in real time. For example, when you have award shows, you'll have live tweeting, for example, going on, such as with the Oscars. This can also be a really great form of earning money through advertising. Okay, so the right kind of news. The right kind of news is what you want to reflect your company. Um, you want to post the right kind of news. This is, so this is news that reflects you and what you want to be known as. But you also really want to know your users' personas. Are they very uh, tech savvy? Do they prefer humor? Uh, do they like video content more than uh, audio content, for example? When you know your users, then you can give them the information they are looking for in the way they want to see it. If they like videos, you share more videos then. But you also want to um, do thought leadership posts and articles to cement your place as a leader. So if you have information to share, you can share it in a means that shows your expertise in a particular area. This actually helps to build up your company's name and reputation. And you can do these thought leadership posts, articles, videos in multiple types of social platforming platforms, such as newsletters, blog posts, papers, webinars, etc. But you don't always want to write about your own company. Talk about things that your, com uh, your audience may be interested in learning, such as the latest performance of uh, a big giant uh, tech company out there or a service provider. So web content can really be used for influencing buying and uh, mobile marketing can really help push your name out. So you want your content to tell a story so that your community will interact with you further via say your blog, social media, and eventually buy into your business. For example, many companies implement social media tools to help customers purchase from them. For example, e-commerce sites will have shopping carts on, on Facebook, for example, so that people can go to Facebook directly and order items. You want to make your content really accessible. So this is where a mobile-friendly version comes in. If you have a mobile-friendly version, it means that you can also make your content easier to access from more remote means. People don't have to be glued to their laptops. And mobile versions can actually create their own communities. For example, some people really only use Twitter on their mobile phones. So what is it about the mobile version that you can make better for people so that they can um, continue to use Twitter on mobile phones in a way that makes them happy? And you want to implement geolocation and QR codes to make content more interesting. So with these, you can make content really interactive and actually give rewards to your users. For example, if I scan a QR code, maybe I can get a coupon for something. Or with geolocation, I can learn the location of something really interesting to me nearby. Is there a coffee house, for example, etc. So you really want to get the right tool for you. Which uh, social media platform is right for you? Maybe you prefer Twitter instead of Facebook. Maybe you prefer Tumblr instead of Pinterest. And just because other companies may use a particular and just because other companies may use a particular platform doesn't necessarily mean you have to. You also want to make content sharing much easier for yourself. You don't need the latest technology to do the, a great video. Sometimes your smartphone is good enough. And you always want to create thinking about your users. What is it about my content that will make users come to me? And post, post everywhere. You know, post on your site and see if you can get your content posted elsewhere as soon as possible to uh, build up buzz, interest, etc. 
and you want to implement things like RSS feeds and links to actually generate more exposure and get your page seen more easily on Google. And remember to use those keywords and phrases your audience is familiar with and tags. So, for example, on Twitter, people call messages tweets. They don't call them uh, posts, for example, as often. And also use newsjacking and search engine marketing. So newsjacking is the idea of posting out information as soon as you can. And um, it's a really great way of sharing and expressing your opinion ASAP. It's uh, similar to posting real-time, and you can actually use real-time techniques like alerts to inform your readers when you've posted out something new. And Twitter is really great for this. You also want to know um, about search engine marketing and use SEO to help you get found more easily on website searches. And your landing page of your website should be really easy to look at and very attractive. So maybe a little less content, but have calls to action. So in conclusion, there are multiple tools and new rules that can be used to market your company better beyond the traditional of just newspaper ads or offline ads. We're now much more an online community around the world. So remember to implement both and don't be afraid to challenge the norm. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, thanks for watching our video. Like, share, and subscribe. Oh, and don't forget to comment.